Akufuado, former president of the Republic, John Ajekum Kufuo. I know he's watching from home. Second lady, Samira, my beautiful Samira. <laughs> National chairman, Stephen Ayesu in team. My running mate and incoming vice president, inshallah, Dr. Matthew Okoku Krempe. Chief of Staff, Akosia Fremal's Hell Parry, the General Secretary, famous Justin Redua Kodia, Ministers of State, Members of Parliament, of course, not forgetting the Majority Leader of Parliament, our parliamentary candidates, our MMDCs. Chairman of the Council of Elders, the National Regional Constituency and Polling Station Executives, the media, ladies and gentlemen, I extend a warm welcome to you all. I stand here filled with a lot of emotion, humility and nostalgia. Sixteen years ago, right here in this beautiful city of Sekendi Takradi. I was outdoored to the good people of Ghana as the running mate to the visionary leader, then flag bearer and leader of the new patriotic party, His Excellency President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Today, I am privileged to return to Takradi, this time against all odds, as the presidential candidate of the new patriotic party to launch the 2024 manifesto of the party. With God, it is possible. In exactly 111 days from today, over 18 million Ghanaians will have the opportunity to decide on a new leader and parliamentarians to govern the affairs of state over the next four years. Fellow Kukrudites, the race is on, and I know, and you know, and they know that the momentum is on our side. I have witnessed first hand the enthusiasm, commitment, and determination of the rank and file of our party, the great new patriotic party to break the eight and usher in life transforming ideas that will deliver broad based prosperity to all Ghanaians. From my possibilities tour, I came across hope, expectations, and the belief that it is possible to transform Ghana and create a sense of pride in the Ghanaian. Our tradition, the Dankwa Dombo Buzia tradition, has not only been the vanguard of the rule of law and governance, but also pace setters and drivers of the life-changing policies and interventions. Let me first thank Honorable Oseche Mensa Bonsu, the chair of the Manifesto Committee, the co-chairs, and all members of the Manifesto team for putting together this wonderful document. I am very grateful for their dedication. Let me also thank the earlier presenters for highlighting the major achievements of our government under the leadership of President Nana Kufuado. We have taken time to highlight these achievements because track record is a significant predictor of credibility and the potential to do more. We have catalogued 
them because in the MPP we view these as our obligation to the people from whom we draw our mandate. We have enumerated them precisely because they communicate our ability to respond to the numerous needs of different sections of our society. Indeed, we have listed them to show we remain committed to fulfilling the social contract we have with the good people of Ghana. Above all, the exercise we have undertaken confirms that hundreds of pledges that have been made to the Ghanaian people and broadly they have been kept and given the opportunity more impactful and forward-looking interventions will be implemented to move Ghana to the next level of, de of the development journey. A journey that will build on our successes to open opportunities for all. We promise to change. We promise change and we have made significant progress. Mr. President, History will be kind to you, and you shall be remembered, remembered for your unprecedented achievements and the millions of lives you have touched. We are eternally grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was any doubt to believe it is crystal clear from the data-backed account we have given, that our overall performance and track record are superior to that of my opponent and his party in virtually every sector. Virtually every sector we are superior. But I believe, as a former president and a proud student of history, he knows that. And that is one part of the reason why he is avoiding a debate. The other part, of course, is about the courage and the confidence to put what he intends to do differently this time around with the power he seeks side by side to the vision I have for Ghana and the clear roadmap to getting the work done. That is the choice we are presenting to you, the Ghanaian voter, on December 7. Ladies and gentlemen, notwithstanding our superior performance, there remains the fact that between 2020 and 2022, we experienced severe challenges triggered by the pandemic which brought the world and our country to a thundering halt. The world experienced the greatest economic depression since the 1930s, with most countries recording negative GDP growth. Supply chain disruptions and the rising price of oil resulted in major increases in the prices of fuel, freight, and food across the globe. Indeed, Ghanaians were hit very hard by rising food prices, increased exchange rate depreciation, rising fuel prices, and rising transport fares. Our debt became unsustainable and had to be restructured. Bondholders saw a sharp decline in their net worth following the painful yet unavoidable debt restructuring program. We faced very, very challenging times, but with calm leadership and the support and understanding of the good people of Ghana, we have weathered the storm and the economy is firmly on the path of recovery with increasing GDP growth and declining inflation. It is gratifying to note that our policy interventions have started yielding the desired macroeconomic results. 
Many economists and analysts have rightly stated that Ghana has turned the corner. But we know that for many families, the cost of living is still very high. The hardship is real, and we commit to doing more to relieve the difficulties Ghanaians are facing. We, we are equally committed to creating more op job opportunities that will significantly reduce youth unemployment among the national population. That has increased over 5 million in the last eight years alone. We have created so far 2.3 million jobs, the most of any government in the Fourth Republic. But youth unemployment remains a major concern and that confronts us, and we are committed to doing even more. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, it is better to continue with a party that has created more jobs than any other in the Fourth Republic than go back to a party and a leader who, after four years of doing so, created more unemployment than any government in the Fourth Republic. <laughs> Ghana, Ghana needs bold solutions to deal with the challenges we face. And that is what I am offering in asking for the mandate of the Ghanaians. This manifesto that we are launching lays out a comprehens our comprehensive plan to take Ghana to the next level of growth, prosperity, under a selfless leader with bold solutions for jobs and businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, my vision, as I have stated, is to create a tent big enough to accommodate every Ghanaian, to tap into the resourcefulness and talents of our people, irrespective of our different ethnic, political, and religious backgrounds, to channel our energies into building the kind of country that assures food sufficiency, safe, prosperous and dignified future for all Ghanaians to create sustainable jobs with meaningful pay for all and for Ghana to participate fully in the fourth industrial revolution using systems and data. To realize this vision, we must collectively have a mindset of possibilities, not impossibilities. There is a critical failure of mindset that manifests itself in the absence of core values, patriotism, and principles within our society. We need to invigorate the can-do spirit of Ghanaians to believe that we can even do better than we have ever imagined if we put our minds to it. For example, students from Mamfi Girls and Prempe College have won international robotic competitions against their peers in the US, Germany, South Korea, and so on. Recently, Dr. Angela Tabiri from Ashaiman was crowned the world's most interesting mathematician after a global competition with some of the best mathematicians in the world. The mindset of possibilities must be inculcated in our children from home and school. This is why we are going to introduce a growth mindset curriculum in our schools to help students build critical skills such as problem solving, risk taking, opportunity spotting, and design thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, we have experienced a major economic crisis, and with your support, 
weathered the storm. But we are not yet where we want to be. It is therefore very important to protect and expand our rebounding economy to attain and sustain macroeconomic stability with low inflation, low interest rates, exchange rate stability, and low budget deficits. Fiscal discipline and private sector empowerment will be the key to realizing our commitment to job and wealth creation. To sustainable, re sustainably reduce the budget deficit and interest rates, my government, inshallah, will enhance fiscal discipline through an independent fiscal responsibility council enshrined in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The Fiscal Responsibility Act will also be amended to add a fiscal rule that requires that budgeted expenditure in any year does not exceed 105% of the previous year's tax revenue. This will prevent the experience of budgetary expenditures based on optimistic revenue forecasts which do not materialize. Ladies and gentlemen, furthermore, my government will reduce the fiscal burden on government by empowering the private sector to do more. <laughs> Fundamental to building any modern prosperous society is ensuring that access to education and health is available to all and that there is a safety net for the most vulnerable. Under the two-term administration of His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Akufuado's government, I can say without any fear of contradiction that no past leader has done more to uplift the poor and the vulnerable in society than my boss. We put in place new ones and expanded existing social policies and programs for the masses across Ghana, like the free senior high school, free TVET, Agenda 111, one constituency, one ambulance, expanding school feeding, na national health insurance care for childhood cancer, sickle cell patients, and kidney dialysis, and so on. I pledge to you that my government will protect and deepen all these programs that several millions of you depend on. From my in, from my interactions with the people, the three top major concerns of Ghanaians are the cost of living, jobs, and roads. The 2024 manifesto of the new patriotic party prioritizes what you, the Ghanaian people, say are your priorities. The manifesto lays out a clear path of how we plan to solve these major problems, among others. That is why my government will make business and jobs our number one priority. True to our philosophy, I believe the private sector has the capacity to provide jobs and create wealth for society. My administration will therefore incentivize the end and power the private sector to do more in complementing government in the provision and management of many infrastructures and other public services. This can reduce government expenditure, increase efficiency and accountability, create competition and improve maintenance. Yes, we have built more roads than any other government in the Fourth Republic, but we still have a lot to do. In the last eight years, 
we have been deliberate in empowering Ghanaian contractors to undertake many major infrastructural projects that would otherwise have gone to foreign contractors. My policies will encourage the private sector to take greater responsibility in the provision and management of critical infrastructures, including building hostels, housing, and schools for government to rent or lease to own. The demand for roads construction is massive, and this has historically placed a huge burden on the budget. I will make it more attractive for the private sector to also finance construction, management, and maintenance of roads through PPP concessions. Also, I want to change our procurement culture drastically to tackle waste and corruption. My government will move towards leasing rather than outright purchase of goods such as vehicles, printing equipment, and so on. The private sector will have the responsibility for the maintenance of the equipment. With this approach, the budget can save very significant amounts in outright cash expenditure annually from various items across different ministries, departments, and agencies. The policy will energize the private sector to invest their, in their expansion and create many jobs. Enhancing the role of the private sector, along with fiscal and administrative decentralization, improving our systems and the way your institutions function will lead to greater efficiency, cutting waste, and ensuring value for money in procurement. The move towards the private sector, provision of many public services, would create the fiscal space of at least 3% of GDP annually. That is 30 billion Ghana cities annually. This represents a major paradigm shift a major paradigm shift. Additionally, in an, an efficient system of governance will require even fewer ministers. Therefore, I will have no more than 50 ministers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I come to our tax system. To increase government tax revenue, we have to reform and refocus the Ghana Revenue Authority towards broadening the tax base. Estimates suggest revenues amounting to 13% of GDP, or some 50 billion, 150 billion Ghana cities in 2023 are not collected because people are outside the tax net. Many individuals, businesses, and businesses find our tax system cumbersome and confusing. We want a tax system that is easy to understand, easy to comply with, and easy to enforce, softer on the taxpayer, and that is not subject to so much discretion. The next MPP government will introduce a very simple, citizen-friendly, and business-friendly flat tax system. This, this will be the first change in our tax system since independence. No government has thought about changing the tax system. But it is the MPP party that is saying it is time for a change in the tax system. A flat tax system and a flat tax will be of a percentage of income for individuals and businesses 
with appropriate exemption thresholds set to protect the poor. With the new tax regime, the re tax return should be able to be completed in minutes. We will also simplify our complicated corporate tax system and VAT regime. We will reform the VAT tax regime by merging all levies into a single line item levy and treat the merged levy as part of input and output VAT to eliminate the cascading effect in the current regime. To start the new tax system on a clean slate, my government will provide a tax amnesty that is a complete exemption from the payment of taxes and the waiving of associated interest and penalties up to a certain year to individuals and businesses for failures to file taxes in previous years so that everyone will start afresh on a clean slate. In return, my government will expect the beneficiaries of the most significant, of this most significant gesture and such savings to be directly used in creating jobs. Our ultimate goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to move Ghana to a lower tax regime with broader coverage to stimulate greater economic activity and generate more revenue to the state. For this to succeed, tax digitalization will be implemented across all aspects of the tax administration. Everyone will be required to file tax, a very simple tax return, electronically through their mobile phone or a computer. There will be no manual or paper filing of taxes anymore. Faceless assessments will provide transparency and accountability. There will be no need under this new tax regime. There will be no need for GRA to send officers to sit in shops, uh, to close shops, e-invoicing, as being implemented by GRA will also be extended. I now come to support for business. Ladies and gentlemen, my government will be for business because true to our philosophy, I believe the business of government is to empower business to deliver for society. We will therefore support the growth of businesses by following by the following policies. We will incentivize Ghanaian startups in selected strategic sectors with investment tax credits for the first three years of their operations. The a flat rate system of duties for all importers will be implemented bringing predictability and stability on prices of imported goods. We will harmonize port charges to align the charges in comp to align with the charges in competing regional ports, particularly Togo. Duties in our ports will not be higher than the duties in Lomi, Togo. Ladies and gentlemen, very importantly, we will use the government's purchasing power to stimulate industrial expansion and business growth. This will help create jobs by rolling out a Buy Ghana First policy under which all goods and services procured by the public sector 
will first be filled by goods and services produced locally. And we will back this by legislation. We will implement a shift in electricity tariffs to structure, in the electricity tariff structure to a regime in which commercial rates are either equal to or lower than residential rates, never higher to power our industries and businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also going to establish an SME bank to meet the special financing needs of small, medium, and small-scale medium enterprises, which will employ over 80 percent of Ghanaians. We will also complete the digitalization of land titling and registration to allow owners of landed properties to use their properties as collateral to raise capital for their business growth and expansion. We will create special economic zones in collaboration with the private sector at Ghana's major border towns such as Aflao, Paga, and Elubu to enhance economic activity, increase exports, reduce smuggling, and create jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to the cost of living, reducing the cost of living. Another major priority of my government will be to reduce the cost of living. The world is facing what is commonly referred to as the global cost of living crisis. Even though the inf inflation has dropped by half this year, prices remain high. I want a Ghana where we can attain food security through the application of technology and irrigation to commercial large-scale farming. We will also promote the use of agricultural lime to reduce the acidity of our soils, enhance soil fertility, and get more yield from the application of fertilizers. Ghana has an abundance of limestone to do this. I will prioritize the construction of the Pualugu Dam by using the private sector financing to crowd in grant financing. Ladies and gentlemen, we will also ensure food security by stabilizing the prices of food produced locally through financing and guarantees from the Development Bank Ghana and the Ghana Incentive-Based Risk-Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, also known as GESEL. This will mainly involve upscaling the production of staple foods, investing in the preservation of staple foods, meat, poultry, and fish products, and establishing agricultural enclaves which will have irrigation, processing, and storage facilities in each region for crops or grains in which the regions have a comparative advantage. We will reduce the cost of transportation by promoting and supporting electric vehicles for public transportation. By the grace of God, I hope the first 100 buses that we will be introducing for public transportation will hopefully, inshallah, arrive before the end of December this year. We are also going to expand the Gold for Oil program to continue stabilizing the price of fuel. Stabilizing the price of spare parts through the flat rate duties for all importers policy, which will bring predictability and stability on prices of imported goods. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also going to make your driver's license valid for 10 years and extend the renewal period to five years. 
under a housing for all policy, I will also have a major focus on the provision of public housing in the same manner that Singapore did. We will partner with the private sector to build large housing estates without the government having to borrow or spend. Also, the National Rental Assistance Scheme, which has worked so well with thousands of beneficiaries, will be enhanced to deal with the problem of the demands of rent advance of two years or more. We will also ensure a variety of accommodation types to meet different pack pockets and needs of as follows. In social housing, we'll be including homeless shelters, overnight stay for the vulnerable, and expanded rental assistance schemes for low-income workers. In the area of affordable housing, we'll be including district housing projects through incentives to the private sector real estate industry, as well as expanding the services of, revived, of the revived state housing company and the Tema Development Corporation and the National Home Ownership Fund, and improving housing finance through the, the ex, an expansion of the mortgage lending market, as well as rent to own schemes. Ladies and gentlemen, we will use a variety of ways to deliver access to the various types of accommodation. For example, social housing. We will provide public lands within our main cities to private developers, and in order to benefit, make it mandatory for them to set aside between 20 and 30 percent for low-income social housing units with subsidized rents. Significantly, ladies and gentlemen, improving the availability and affordability of power, we will do this by bringing on board 2,000 megawatts of solar power and incentivizing users by buying access to power they generate from their solar systems and paying with free electricity from the national grid when they need power through net metering. We will continue to make accessing services easier. For example, once you have a Ghana card, all public organizations will not be required to collect your basic data. They will have all that data. They don't need you to fill any forms because all of it is on your Ghana card. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to build a Ghana where we leverage technology, data, and systems for econ inclusive economic growth. I want to build a Ghana into a world-class digital economy. I want to build a Ghana where we apply digital technology, STEM, robotics, and artificial intelligence for the transformation of agriculture, healthcare, education, manufacturing, fintech, and public services delivery. As part of this process, it is my goal to eliminate the digital divide by achieving over 90% internet penetration within the first four years of office. We have already made very significant progress in this direction by increasing internet penetration from 34% in 2016 to some 70% by 2023. The entire task in the next four years is to move from 70% to over 90% as exists in the advanced countries. It is possible. I am determined to not let Ghana miss out on the fourth industrial revolution 
as our continent did on the Industrial Revolution some centuries back. I want to see Ghana build the digital talent we require for the fourth Industrial Revolution. This will mean providing digital software skills to hundreds of thousands of youth. This, along with other priorities, will create jobs for the youth, including school dropouts. In collaboration with the private sector, we will train at least one million youth in IT skills, including software development, to provide job opportunities worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, Generally, there will be an enhanced focus on technical and vocational education. My government will also support the establishment of a national open university, Ghana, in collaboration with the private sector, and it will focus on ICT, TVET, and STEM. Ladies and gentlemen, to prepare our children for the fourth industrial revolution, I will enhance the positioning of the educational system towards STEM, robotics, artificial intelligence, and vocational skills to cope with the demands of the fourth industrial revolution and job creation. My government will make coding and robotics standard in senior high school. Furthermore, to become a dig furthermore, to become a digital hub in Africa, Ghana's telecoms industry needs more investment. The cost of data for the ordinary Ghanaian has become too expensive. It goes against the very ethos of our digitalization journey. We commit to working actively with industry players in setting clear policy guidelines that will remove any investor uncertainty and difficulties in business planning, including the expeditious allocation of spectrum, driven more by the goal, goal of enhancing digital inclusion. In addition, we would be working with educational institutions, leading and global tech firms to establish a national robotics engineering and AI lab for research and training of young Ghanaians locally. We will also be providing venture capital funding and grant support for commercially valuable, viable tech projects by Ghanaian startups to drive innovation, foster high-tech entrepreneurship, create jobs, and support growth of Ghanaian high-tech businesses. We will also be providing live lab opportunities to Ghanaian tech startups under a matching program by purposely connecting them to matured large tech firms working on government tech projects to help startups test their ideas in real-world environments and to accelerate their product development cycle. We will also be working with the Bank of Ghana to significantly expand our regulatory sandbox to admit more fintechs as well as regional fintechs. This will position Ghana as a multi-regulatory, multi-jurisdictional sandbox for financial payments interoperability. We will also be establishing a fintech fund with a seed capital of 100 million US dollars. That is about, 100, uh, about 150, one, uh, 1 1.5 billion Ghana seeds to attract additional private sector funding and to support Ghanaian startups development, developing payments and financial services solutions especially focused on region-wide explorable solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will also be implementing a digital residency, that is e-residency, for businesses and individuals in tech firms 
to register and operate with, within Ghana. We are also going to be implementing a five-year digital nomad visa and work permit to attract global tech talent to domicile and work from Ghana, appointing also, ladies and gentlemen, a digital ambassador whose role will be to develop new external markets for Ghanaian digital talents and products and facilitate the export of our digital services. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll also be implementing comprehensive data interoperability across government platforms to enhance transparency and streamline services. We will be pushing further Ghana's leadership led by my boss, Ghana's leadership role in achieving cross-border mobile money interoperability among other payment systems within the AFCFTA to enhance buying and selling within Africa's 1.4 billion consumer market. Ladies and gentlemen, we will also be creating a market place to streamline public sector procurement. As a result of the increase in fiscal space from the tax and expenditure move measures we are going to undertake, we will be in a position to enhance the digital economy by abolishing the e-levy as well as taxes on mobile phones. We are also going to ensure in this digital economy that we are building that the Ghana card will not be required that for any person who holds a, 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 a Ghana card, you will not be required to fill a form to get a passport. You will just be required to pay your fee because all the information is on the Ghana card. Ladies and gentlemen, working with industry players, we intend to make Ghana a world-class digital economy and a digital hub of Africa. I now come to our natural resources. Ladies and gentlemen, as president, the next MPP government will usher Ghana into a golden age for the maximization of the benefits of our natural resources like gold, lithium, bauxite, and so on. The key to doing this is value addition and Ghanaian ownership. As we have started with lithium, we need a new paradigm in a natural resource contracts that sees more of the benefit accruing to Ghana. Some of the key policies that will, we will implement to maximize our benefits from our natural resources include formalizing and regularizing and regulating environmentally sustainable small-scale mining. Our goal would be to help grow the small-scale mining companies into large-scale mining companies with the capacity to building and assisting them to access financing to acquire equipment. With, in line with this, we will license all miners doing responsible mining. District mining committees, including our chiefs, will provide initial temporary licenses to the miners. Every Ghanaian in small-scale mining will register under the Ghana Small Scale Miners Association with the Ghana card. We will, in collaboration with the large mining companies, convert abandoned shafts into community mining schemes. We will also open new community mining schemes and district mining communities would be responsible for reclamation and replanting. We will also set up state-of-the-art common user gold processing units in mining districts in collaboration with the private sector. 
we will also conduct an audit of all concessions with various licenses and new applications. This will allow government to know licenses that have expired and our and non-compliance with the existing license conditions, i.e. non-compliance. My government will establish, in collaboration with the private sector, a minerals development bank to support the mining industry. My government will also reduce, my government will also reduce the minerals export tax to 1% to discourage smuggling and encourage more production. We will establish through the private sector a London Bullion Market Association certified gold refinery in Ghana within the next four years. Following the establishment of this refinery, all the responsibly mined gold in Ghana produced by the small scale sector will be sold either to the central bank, PMMC, or MIF. We will make available proven reserves data from the Geological Survey Authority to small scale miners to help deal with the associated problem of trial and error digging for gold, which destroys our environment. Once the data is available, the small-scale miners will know exactly where the gold is. And so they have, don't have to do trial and error. They will go directly to where the gold is, and the environment will not be destroyed. We will also adequately resource the Geological Survey Authority to undertake the mapping exercise. We will also scale up the use of mercury-free gold catcher machine technology, which is less damaging to our environment. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to an important subject matter of stabilizing our currency. Ladies and gentlemen, recognizing the need to transform the structures of the Ghanaian economy from merely being an exporter of raw materials an importer of finished products to producing what we consume and adding value to our raw materials and farm produce. The Akufuado-led government set out in 2017 to find solutions by introducing transformational policies such as one district, one factory. While industrialization remains the long-term solution, to macroeconomic stability and shared prosperity for Ghanaians. The vulnerabilities in the structure of the Ghanaian economy remain and were heavily exposed by the global crisis of 2020 to 2022. The crisis hit us really hard. But you may wonder why, unlike previous times, when the city faced severe pressure. This time around, we have never experienced queues at our fuel stations or doom so, as we did in 2015. Let me tell you a short story on, about that. I approached my boss when we had this crisis as I saw our foreign exchange reserves continually dwindling. I approached my boss and suggested a novel way as a solution to the shortage of foreign exchange. I proposed that we leverage on gold to produce directly in, foreign, in exchange for the essential goods we import. He gave me the go ahead to pilot the one critical import, petroleum products, the shortage of which would have completely derailed our economy. And that is what resulted in gold for oil. I am happy to say that the two policies that have helped rescue the economy from catastrophe in, re in the recent crisis, where the Bank of Ghana's 
domestic gold purchase program, which I proposed, and the gold for oil program. The pilot, these two policies, the pilot has worked for a number of companies and has worked for the countries. Some companies which wanted to repatriate dividends and couldn't do so because of foreign exchange constraints have suddenly been able to do so under the, because of the gold purchase program. We have thus found a solution in the midst of this crisis and, and bringing together the pilot of this gold for oil and gold purchase programs. We have thus, in, through this crisis, we have suddenly found a solution to the profit repatriation problem that many businesses had without destabilizing our local currency. This also brings major comfort to foreign investors operating in our countries. I believe from the success of the pilot scheme, we can confidently say that we have found a solution to the age-old foreign exchange problem that successive governments have struggled to contain and which invariably led to inflation and other macroeconomic challenges. My government will completely institutionalize what I will call the gold for forex program, even as we intensify efforts to transform the structure of the Ghanaian economy. Simply put, the domestic Gold Purchase Program is a policy which allows the Bank of Ghana to boost our foreign exchange reserves by buying locally produced gold with CDs. Gold purchases from this program alone amounted to $5 billion in the last couple of years. With Ghana's unexplored gold reserves estimated at $5 billion ounces with a market value of 10 trillion US dollars. My government will ramp up the gold purchase program to cover all major forex demands. We will cover all major forex demands with the gold purchase program. Put simply, if for example a company wants dollars, we will take the acidies and we will buy gold, and we will give them their foreign currency. The gold purchase program will therefore provide the anchor that our local currency has always lacked. Ladies and gentlemen, going forward, I want to build in with your support, I want to build a credit system for Ghana. In the advanced economies, workers are able to easily access credit to purchase items such as televisions, cars, mobile phones, and houses. They are able to do so because the credit system over there works and it is supported by individualized credit scoring by the credit rating agencies. In the advanced countries, People are able to obtain mobile phones for free for, for, under a contract arrangement with their telephone companies. But people with the impossibility mindsets don't understand that these things are possible. In Ghana, such a credit system is yet to develop and therefore life is harder for our workers. It is our goal to make it easier and cheaper to access credit by leveraging our data and our systems, such as the Ghana Card, the Ghana Post GPS, mobile money interoperability, Momo accounts, DVLA, GRA data, bank accounts, and so on, to build an efficient credit system and a mortgage market in Ghana underpinned by an individualized credit scoring system. 
and the digitalization of land titling and transfer. We look forward to starting individualized credit scoring in Ghana this year, in 2024. And this will make it easier for Ghanaians to access credit at lower interest rates. My promise to you is that soon you, you in Ghana will no longer have to save before you are buying what you need. You can buy it on credit and pay small, 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 like they do in the advanced countries. In the area of public infrastructure, we will, to reiterate, partner the private sector to finance, build, and rent or lease to own to government public infrastructure including schools, housing, water, and roads, as well as equipment. We will revive and resource, inc resource including modern equipment and state-of-the-art workshops, the Public Works Department, PWD, to be the primary government agency responsible for maintenance of public infrastructure across the country. We will fully implement and expand the district road improvement program under which the local governments, have, local governments have been supplied with equipment to help maintain roads in their districts. This district road improvement project was the brainchild of the MPP government and not anybody else. We have brought it and nobody should try to claim credit for it. Through partnerships with the private sector investors, we'll develop the railway network across the country based on the master plan with strategic focus on the western and eastern lines in the medium term. These two lines are of high economic importance and will be prioritized for development and completion under my government by the grace of God, Eastern and Western railway lines. We will facilitate the establishment by the private sector of a maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility at the Tamale Airport to develop into an aviation cargo, horticultural cargo, and logistics hub. We will also commence the development of the match uh, talked about by us in our last manifesto, the development of the Cape Coast Airport for which funding has been secured under the Korean $2 billion facility, which we will serve both the central and the western regions. In collaboration with the private sector, we will also build an airport in the Upper East region. We will achieve through our investment, universal access to electricity in our first term of a Baumia government. And we will complete all the Agenda 111 hospitals to ensure every district gets a district hospital and all the regions get new regional hospitals. As a result, we will re recruit more doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals with improved conditions of service, and will bring healthcare services to your doorstep by completing the digitalization of public healthcare institutions under the eHealth project. Under the eHealth project, we have digitalized all the patient records in all teaching hospitals all the regional hospitals and all the district hospitals. So today, if you are referred from Wa to Kolebu, you don't need to bring a folder. You just bring your ID number, the doctor in Kolebu will enter your ID number and all your records will be there for the doctor to see. We expect that next year, by next year, we'll co cover the remaining health uh, centers and chips compounds so that we have a comprehensive database. 
We will also scale up. Once we have done this, we are going to be scaling up telemedicine services and establishing, ladies and gentlemen, we are also going to be establishing two additional sites in, ex in addition to the existing six sites of drone delivery centers at Funsi in the Upper West region and at Kintampo. So we are establishing two more drone sites. And the establishment of these two sites will give us 100% coverage for drone delivery across all of Ghana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have established the National Electronic Pharmacy Platform. We have put together 2,456 pharmacies on one platform, which, has, which is working. So today, if your doctor prescribes you a medicine, you can go to the pharmacy platform, put in your uh, medicational requirements. The platform will tell you which pharmacy near you has the medicine and what the prices are. We will make sure this platform is interoperable with all private and public facilities. We will also offer incentives to healthcare workers to be able to buy one vehicle each with an engine capacity of up to 1,800 cc. And we will also ensure compliance with the existing deprived area incentive package for health workers. Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of affirmative action, for women and girls, we will implement in full the Affirmative Action Act we recently passed. We will establish a Women's Trade Empowerment Fund, WOTEF, to support women-owned businesses. We will, we will ensure, we will ensure gender parity in the award of government scholarships. And we will further improve the maternal health care program. We will pursue a women in diplomacy program for Ghanaian women to take more leadership roles in international organizations. And we will ensure that existing sexual harassment laws are strictly enforced. We'll also be enabling mothers to seamlessly enter the workforce by prioritizing in partnership with the private sector the establishment of daycare centers near workplaces, including marketplaces. We'll, we will enforce existing regulations on maternity leave governance as well. In the area of education, ladies and gentlemen, my government will increase the stock of student accommodation in our universities and other public tertiary institutions to address the housing deficit on our campuses and make them affordable. We will introduce a free tertiary tech scholarship for persons with disabilities to remove the financial barriers to pursuing educational, their educational goals. On scholarships, we will integrate the scholarship databases across all the public sector institutions managing such schemes to ensure full visibility and transparency. We will expand eligibility for the student loan scheme to include all post-secondary students, including certificate and diploma programs. We will prioritize and direct a significant proportion of national scholarship schemes towards training and skills development in STEM, as well as other needed skills in Ghana. We will implement in full the Centralized Application Processing Service, CAPS, for tertiary institutions. Under this, you will apply once and pay once. 
As I already said, we will establish a national open university. And for those who, after completion of their tertiary education, have secured jobs, they would be exempted from national service. They can go and start work immediately. We will protect and enhance free SHS and free TVET, which is truly transforming lives and changing life outcomes for millions of people. Since we started the free SHS and free TVET, enrollment has increased by 83%. We are building the foundation for a well-educated, prosperous society. With free SHS and TVET, we have achieved gender parity. More girls are, at, are getting secondary education, and the impact will be positive for society. We, as a result, will recruit more teachers at all levels with improved conditions of service. We will also continue to develop additional infrastructure for our educational institutions to meet the increased numbers. We will offer incentives also for teachers to buy one vehicle each with an engine capacity of up to 1,800 cc. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to good governance. In the area of good governance, we will, and I reiterate, reinstate, we will reinstate the process of getting MMDCs elected through a universal adult suffrage to deepen decentralization and effective local governance. We will delink the creation of districts from constituencies to bring an end to the automatic increase in the size of parliament. We will institute an electoral area share of the common fund for assembly members to facilitate development at the electoral area levels. And we will engage parliament and other stakeholders, including political parties, to review the 1992 constitution to achieve effective national development. We'll provide value-based leadership predicated on values such as selflessness, excellence, ethics, justice, integrity, transparency, diligence, and accountability. In pursuit of values-based leadership and responsible citizenship, we'll formalize the relationship between the state, chiefs, faith-based organizations, and civil society organizations, and redefine and elevate their place and role in the national governance structure. We will formally designate faith-based organizations as development partners who are entitled to similar incentives. We will review Section 63 of the Chieftaincy Act to empower chiefs to strengthen local governance and we will pay living allowances to paramount chiefs, divisional chiefs, and queen mothers. To encourage the registration of all lands and to avoid land disputes, all two lands will be registered without an initial fee payment. Payment will only be made of the registration fee when the land is sold, and then we will get our fee. But initially, all chiefs can go ahead and register two lands without paying a fee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my government will also protect Ghanaian cultural and family values. Dealing with corruption is my next area of focus. Ladies and gentlemen, all governments have struggled with the canker of corruption in our society. People have been killed for corruption, and people have been jailed for corruption, but yet it persists. My view is that corruption operates in darkness, and we need to deal with it through 
openness and transparency and through digitalization. Our approach so far has been to deal with corruption after it occurs. My approach to deal with is to deal with corruption before it occurs. Digitalization is the vehicle. The Ghana card has enabled us basically to eliminate ghost workers from the controller and accountant general payroll, also from the SNIT payroll and the national service payroll. Using the Ghana card and the elimination of ghost workers in SNIT and the national service scheme, we have saved 800 million Ghana cities in just these two institutions. One of the most potent weapons against corruption is transparency. Many corrupt activities are cash-based. Apart from the obvious benefits of moving in the direction of a cashless society, the literature does indicate that more electronic payments are used in, uh, the, in transactions as opposed to cash. The more that is done, the more there is traceability, and therefore, the less corruption. I would like to bring Ghana close to a cashless economy in the shortest possible time. So far, the Bank of Ghana has made a lot of progress in this direction by putting in place a lot of payment systems and infrastructure. These include mobile money interoperability, merchant interoperability, the universal QR code payment system, the GH Link debit card, eSwitch, Ghana Pay. We have put in place the necessary infrastructure to go cashless as a country. Recently, the Bank of Ghana has completed a pilot of the digital version of the Ghana CD in Sefiwi also. This is, this is known as a central bank digital currency or the ECD. The ECD is designed to work online and offline and will be launched by the Bank of Ghana in due course. The ECD will be the ultimate weapon in our fight against corruption because it will provide transparency, reduce the risk of fraud, lob robbery, tax avoidance, and money laundering, since it will be easy to track the movement of money and, the, the, and identify suspicious activity. The ECD will quicken the pace of Ghana's move towards a cashless or a near cashless society. We will also, ladies and gentlemen, implement blockchain technology and smart contracts for secure data exchange and transparent government services. Employing a distributed ledger technology improves transparency and efficiency. This will make all government transactions permanently traceable and not subject to alteration. I want Ghana to be the first country in Africa and one of the few in the whole world to become an all-government blockchain government. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of care for the elderly, we will pass the Unaging Act for the care and protection of the elderly. We will promote geriatric care training programs to address the growing need for, for elder care. We'll implement policies on the establishment of home care, nursing homes, and rehabilitation services, including assisted living and old age community living. We will create elder specific social assistance schemes to cover those not currently covered by existing programs such as LEAP. In the area of the environment, ladies and gentlemen, we will enhance the protection of our forests and biodiversity hotspots. We will restore our forests through a reforestation program by targeting 30,000 hectares of degraded areas for reforestation and plantation development annually, establishing 1,000 hectares of bamboo 
and rotten, rotten plantations annually for watershed protection and plantation development. We are also going to be providing tree seedlings and plantation suckers in a minimum of a thousand communities to enhance national reforestation and plantation development programs. We will protect and preserve our water resources by vigorously protecting both surface and underground sources by ensuring that the provisions of the water use regulations are adhered to. We'll protect transborder water sources, notably the Volta River, and we we'll effectively manage all water basins in Ghana. With our mining policy, we believe that we are going to be able to deal with Galamse, and that will help us protect the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of sports, the creative arts and tourism, we will use tax incentives, including a flat tax, to incentivize private sector investments in sports, tourism, and the creative arts. We'll implement an e-visa policy for all international visitors to Ghana to make visa acquisition fast and convenient for visitors. We will roll out a visa-free policy for all African nationals and all Caribbean nationals visiting Ghana. We will also establish a travel protocol in partnership we will also, in partnership with the private sector, establish a streaming and digital management platform for Ghanaian content developers in the creative arts. We'll also establish a travel protocol service for the creative community to enable artists, performers, and other creatives honor international performances and shows. We will establish a sports development fund to develop sports infrastructure and talent development and grassroots sports programs, including the revival of Colts football and leagues across the country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will establish a Ghana School Sports Secretariat, which will be an agency under the ministry responsible for sports in collaboration with other stakeholders, such as the GES and sports federations. My government will seek school-level collaboration with international sports bodies, like the NBA and the NFL, to make Ghana a hub for these emerging sports in Africa, to create more opportunities for young people. We have already tried this with the NFL, the governing body for American football. We will, ladies and gentlemen, also upgrade the surfaces of our big football pitches to meet the highest international standards. And so we will be seeing an upgrading of the stadia in Kumasi, Accra, Cape Coast, Tamale, and Esipong to make sure that they meet the highest international standards. My government will also implement an effective maintenance module for our sports facilities. We will continue the construction of astroturfs for every constituency to boost the development of our talents, including juvenile football. We have increased astroturfs from three that we inherited to over 150 in 2024. We are going to start an Operation or Olympics Glory program by dedicating resources towards the preparation of our athletes and their readiness for the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles, USA, including where necessary targeting specific sports for medals. We will support the revival of the Premier League and clubs to improve commercial viability and create related jobs by directing policy through the National Lotteries Authority and the Gaming Commission to establish and fund a sports employment module to assist premier clubs fund operational expenses, including player remuneration, 
and also we will provide a bus to each Premier League club. And we will build six 5,000-seater capacity stadia for the new regions, the six new regions, and we will build a standard stadium for Sunyani because of their love of football and the many clubs in Sunyani. We will promote school sports by establishing a Ghana School Sports Secretariat to create more opportunities for young people in sports and collaborate with international bodies, as I said, to make Ghana a hub for emerging sports. Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of protecting our borders, we will not compromise on efforts, on our efforts to ensure Ghanaians feel safe and are free to go about their daily lives. We will therefore continue to keep our borders protected our communities and neighborhoods also safe. We will complete the 15 forward operating bases at our border frontiers of Ghana. This will allow the military to swiftly respond to any external hostilities and threats posed by terrorists in the sub-region. We will continue equipping Ghana's security services to build their capability in protecting the nation. And we will also focus on equipping the prison service as well as the fire service. We will deepen the cooperation of our neighboring states and the international community in the fight against violent extremism. We will recruit and deploy 20,000 more security personnel to enhance the visibility and strengthen the human resources of our security services. To make our neighborhoods safe, we are going to roll out 50,000 more anti-crime cameras, the CCTVs. And so far, we have rolled out about 11,000 CCTVs. But many districts and regions, re many district capitals and regional capitals are not fully covered. So we ask national security to undertake an exercise to tell us what is needed so that we can see what is happening in every public street, in every regional capital, and every district capital, every day and every night. They came back and told us they needed 50,000 cameras, CCTVs, for us to be able to accomplish that directive. And my government will provide the 50,000 CCTV cameras so that we have complete visibility in all our regional capitals and all our district capitals to basically make sure that if you commit a crime, we are going to catch you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll also roll out more body cameras for the police and other logistics. I believe that we can find, ladies and gentlemen, a broad, you know, find broad contours of, of a national development plan for which we can find consensus in areas such as education, healthcare, industrialization, and so on. I will support such a consensus national development plan. Specifically, I propose that we can amend Article 87 of the 1992 Constitution, as well as the NDPC Act, Act 7479, to mandate political manifestos, political party manifestos, and consequently the economic and social policies of governments, as well as budgets, to be aligned to agreed broad contours in specific centers. The current Constitution was designed for political stability and it has achieved that. We need to amend it with the help of parliament to align it more to national development. In that context, we are committed to the process to amend the 1992 constitution through public consultation with a key emphasis, emphasis on the election of MMDCs to deepen democratic decentralization ex gratia, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to build a nation 
that cares for and invests in the vulnerable, like persons with disabilities, the aged, the street kids, the lepers, cerebral palsy patients, and so on. In cooperation with faith-based institutions and the private sector, my government will also focus on special needs. To start with, we will recruit 1,000 special needs teachers and, and retrain teachers on how to work with special needs students. We will also train more speech and language therapists and occupational and behavioral therapists. We will also set a quota for the recruitment of persons with disabilities in all government recruitment and also provide incentives for the private sector to recruit persons with disabilities. Now to the youth, to the youth of our country, kindly lend me your ears. I have been, I have been to you and I have listened to your concerns and soaked your aspirations. I want to assure you that I am for you. Our nation is at a crossroads. We are preparing to elect a new president in December 2024. And I believe I will serve you better as your next leader. I am a problem-solving leader. In the last seven years, I have, with the blessings of President Nana Kufuado, led and championed initiatives to address some of the fundamental problems in the public service delivery area. I possess the integrity you require in, the next, in your next president. I believe that the Almighty has blessed me with a fortitude of character to ensure the implementation of bold solutions for our future. My track record of public service and in international development is public knowledge. My entire career, from academ academia through to the Bank of Ghana, the African Development Bank, and my current role as Vice President, has been anchored on competence, diligence, and efficient and effective management skills that have contributed that have contributed to my ability to see projects through to completion. I am determined to make your future my business if you give me the mandate to save you. My proven ability to manage and deliver results professionally and transparently sets me apart from the rest in the race. As an experienced professional with unblemished national and international credentials, I am ready to bring that expertise to bear on national governance with the sole motivation to transform. The MPP delegates resoundingly gave me the mandate to lead the party based on my performance and the delivery of major signature projects and programs and vision. Given these and my verifiable personal integrity, I humbly ask you, ladies and gentlemen, that you hand the steer to me Now you hand the steer to me to usher in a new government, a new management style that will give us additional results, a paradigm shift in how we manage our resource and let the benefits of nationhood reach out 
to every member of society. With all humility, I declare that I am a visionary leader who can, who can generate new ideas to confront problems. I have the exciting ideas for the 21st century nation. We have done well in creating jobs in the last seven years. 2.3 million jobs, the most of any government in the Fourth Republic. However, unemployment is still a major issue amongst us. I make a firm commitment to sustain and expand the rebounding economy to address the problem of unemployment. To the Gen Z's, to the Gen Z's, I am well plugged into the new world you belong. And I know the keys to press to unlock your potentials within. I am your plug to your dreams of a prosperous Ghana. I am your plug to creating opportunities and decent paying jobs. I shall offer you a problem solving leadership built on my values of integrity, compassion and sincerity. To this end, I have presented for your consideration our manifesto for 2024. The, the manifesto, the manifesto is giving. It is giving hope. It is giving ideas. It is giving jobs. It offers the opportunity to create a new generation of entrepreneurs through my business support initiatives. It strives to make Ghana fully a fully digitalized nation in which you are able to access public services with ease. It incentivizes the private sector to expand and deliver good jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that as Vice President, the policies I have championed or initiated have impacted or will impact the lives of virtually every Ghanaian. I have, with the full blessings and support of my boss, promised and delivered on many groundbreaking policies that are happening for the first time in our history. These include championing the Ghana card Agenda 111, e-pharmacy, Ghana.gov, One Constituency, One Ambulance, Zongo Development Fund, Paperless Ports, Moto Insurance, Database, Renewal of NHIS on your mobile phone, Ghana Card Number as your TIN number, SNIT number, NHIS number, Zip Line, Delivery for Drones, Gold for Oil, Gold Purchase Program, and so on, and so on, and so on. Through, ladies and gentlemen, through the successful implementation of these policies, I have proven to be a problem solver and a promise keeper. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the choice Ghanaians face in 2024 fundamental is a choice between a brighter future and a bleak past. As I noted in my presentation at UPSA in February, we have to ask ourselves a number of questions in making that choice. If you want someone you can trust to come up with innovative and impactful ideas to transform Ghana, 
then it is Dr. Bawumia. If you want someone with personal integrity who can be trusted to fight corruption, then your choice is Dr. Bawumia. And if the person you have in mind is someone you can trust to work tirelessly and selflessly for Ghana, then it is Dr. Bawumia. If you want a leader with a proven record who you can trust to create jobs for the youth, then it is Dr. Bawumia. If you are looking for the man who has the vision and the commitment to prepare Ghana for the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution, then it is Dr. Bawumia. If you are looking for the man who is more committed to protecting and using the natural resources for the benefit of Ghanaians, then the answer is Dr. Bawumia. Who will be more accountable to Ghanaians? A one-term president like my opponent or a person who can look to a long-term development of Ghana because he will return to you after four years to render an account for the long term. It is Dr. Bahumia. Who can you trust? Who can you trust to protect free senior high school education? The answer is Dr. Bawumia. Who, who has demonstrated to the development, who has demonstrated a commitment to the development of deprived communities like the, our inner city communities and the Zongo communities? It is Dr. Bawumia. Who can you trust? Who can you trust to provide bold solutions to improve our economy, create jobs, and improve social protection? It is Dr. Baumia. Ladies and gentlemen, I am determined to make a difference, a positive difference. I am determined to use the experience I have earned over the last seven to eight years from the challenges and the priorities we have tackled, from the successes we have chalked to the hard work to succeed with you on the priorities that I have laid before you today. I will work for you, with you, with honesty and integrity, with wisdom and decisiveness. I have clarity of mind as to what I want to do from day one as president. I will not ask you for a honeymoon to cool off and think about what to do with the responsibility you give me. I am prepared and ready to serve. You know what I stand for. You know my vision. I believe in the ingenuity of the Ghanaian. Together we can succeed in building a progressive society of possibilities, enterprise, compassion, open opportunities, and shared prosperity for every Ghanaian, born rich or poor, born in the north or the south, born Christian or Muslim, born a girl or a boy, a leper or a disabled person. I have never been president of Ghana before. I am presenting myself to you for the first time to ask for your precious vote to serve you 
as your president and to continue the development agenda of the MPP. When you make me president, inshallah, I will implement my own vision that I have outlined. In all humility, I will ask you to give me the opportunity to become one of the most impactful presidents in Ghana's history. In conclusion, dear Ghanaians, what I have presented today are just highlights of our manifesto. There are many more details and policies that are found in the full version. I implore you and entreat you all to read the full manifesto. This manifesto we are launching today is a manifesto of hope, a manifesto anchored on bold solutions to usher in the golden age of good governance and accountability, and a manifesto of possibilities focusing on quantum leaps in jobs and prosperity. Our positive mindset is built on a strong track record of innovations and achievements. Un uh, unlike our friends who regard every life-changing policy proposal as impossible, we in the MPP see possibilities. We innovate, deliver, and prosper. I mean to deliver for you and your family, for your future, for your business. Indeed, Baumia means business. I thank you for your support, your prayers, and with God's guidance, we can win together. It is possible. Thank you for your attention. God bless you and God bless our homeland as we launch our manifesto. We launch our manifesto.